No, White's blown it. I think he had to go to G3. G3. I think he loses. In today's video, we're going to be playing a 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game on chess.com. And I'll be trying to explain my thought process while I'm playing my move so that you can understand a bit better what I'm thinking and hopefully implement it into some of your games. This series is essentially just trying to get back to 2000 after being at 2000 rapid and bottling it essentially so yeah this is the third episode of this kind of revival as i'm liking to call it so let's get into the game i hope you enjoy all right so this is kind of a coincidence because we're against kiwi stoic from new zealand this is actually our third game against him in this series we've played him twice already and i think we may have had the white pieces both times so here he's gonna have to face our beloved Karo Khan, which obviously I'm very happy about. He goes for the advanced variation. Here, you basically have two moves. You can play bishop to f5, or you can play c5 immediately going after the center. I prefer c5, because if white takes, then the pawn on c5 and the pawn on e5 are both incredibly vulnerable, and black can get some really nice development while going after those pawns. The knight f3, I'm going to meet with knight c6. Bishop g4 is playable, but I prefer just to kind of match white. And he takes on c5. Okay. So you can play queen to um, a5 to immediately win the pawn back, because this is a fork. But I don't, I don't think it actually works after queen a5, knight c3. And if queen c5, then the d-pawn is hanging. So... I'm tempted to go bishop to g4 to pin the knight. And I'm expecting white to play bishop to b5. Because the idea is that I'm pinning the knight to the queen. So that I'm potentially preparing knight to e5. Because the knight will no longer be defending the pawn. I think this is actually a kind of trap that white is setting. I, I can't take on e5, I believe. Because if knight e5, white can actually just go knight e5. And after bishop d1 bishop b5 the king is out of squares so you have to block with the queen you lose the queen back and i believe white ends up just up like a piece or potentially even yeah it might be two pieces actually so that's terrible don't do that i think e6 might be the move because we've now got our bishop out we can open up the attack on c5 and now if we take on e5 white can't do this knight sacrifice line because after the bishop check we always have the e7 square to escape to so we don't have to block with the queen I, I believe e6 is the move i mean i don't see anything else that is viable anyway this might be one of the lines where white can kind of hold on to the pawn i think you can probably also just take the knight but i'm gonna do this there's also ideas of um, queen a4 picking up the bishop in some lines. So, okay, what happens if we do knight e5? If knight e5, he can't play knight e5. If he goes queen... Ah, no, queen a4 is a problem. Because we can't retreat the knight back, because the knight is defending the bishop, right? And the queen's attacking the bishop. And if we try and block with like queen d7 to, to facilitate a queen trade, because obviously if queen takes, knight takes, our knight no longer hangs. Uh, I believe white can just go bishop b5 and then we'd be forced to retreat the knight and then our bishop would hang. So I'm pretty sure you are supposed to take on f3. And may maybe black is like basically equal here. I think my opponent's played this very well. He clearly knows his theory, <laughs> honestly, better than I do. But I think I can now just go ahead and take on e5. Restore material equality. White is probably going to try some majority pawn attack on the queen side to try and create a passer, which we don't really want to allow. And try and utilize this c-pawn in that manner. But yeah, I think we should just be taking on e5. We don't have anything else that I think is particularly useful. Yep, let's take. If he gives a check, we can just drop the knight back. We can maybe even go to d7, but I don't want to allow pawn to c6, because that can be quite uncomfortable. So if bishop to b5, I'm just going to play knight c6. The bishop might kind of struggle with development, but we do have the f6 square for the knight now, because we've removed the e5 pawn that was previously stopping that. 
So, you know, white has some pretty good development. C4 looks a bit annoying, I suppose, because we can't take because of bishop c6, pawn c6, queen c6, and we'd be in trouble. So c4 is the move I'm expecting. I think we can just go knight f6, though. If c4, bish, sorry, queen a5, knight c3, obviously blocking the check and defending the bishop, I don't think we have any way to try and undermine the knight. If c4, we could go a6, because if bishop takes pawn takes, that's decent. Yeah, he does go c4. Oh, also, queen a5 doesn't really work anyway, because the pawn's defending the bishop. So, okay, that's not even, not even worth considering. We could go knight f6. We could also go queen f6, potentially. Queen f6 offering a queen trade. Uh, I'm actually just going to refresh my page real quick, so give me a second. I don't know why, the chess.com servers just get really laggy. Like, in the past month or so, I've noticed it. It's really bad. I don't know why it happens. Um, okay, we can't take this C pawn. The most natural move that comes to mind is knight f6, just adding more defense to d5. Something like knight f6, knight c3, just adding more pressure. I don't think we can go d4 to fork because of bishop c6. I think that's a problem. Rook c8 might be good, just supporting the knight and providing some pressure on c5 once something happens on the c6 square. Knight e7 is tempting to defend the knight and the pawn, but then it blocks in the bishop, so that's probably no good. Yeah, queen a5 would just be a bad move. Um... Yeah, knight f6 just looks to be the best move, to be honest. Bishop g5 I don't think does anything, because then the c5 pawn hangs. If knight f6, knight c3. Maybe we can just go a6. If the bishop retreats. Mm, I'm going to go knight f6. I think this is okay. It's something like pawn takes, probably queen takes is the best to offer a queen trade. Yeah, he goes knight c3 to apply more pressure, which of course makes sense. And okay, a6 looks decent. If a6, cd5, knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, queen d5, e, um, ed5. And then he can just retreat the bishop. And then we're just left with an isolated pawn. And that doesn't really look great. So, okay. A6, I think, would be a bad move. Have I just got, like, out theoried here? I may well have. This is kind of nuts. My opponent is just playing perfectly. Hmm. And, by the way, he's not a cheater at all. Because I've played him twice already. I know he's absolutely not. So, I'm not, not accusing him of anything. Um, this is probably worth considering, because if he takes back, then I think we're fine. We can just continue development with, like, I don't know, queen a5 to go after the c5 pawn. If we take on c4, and bishop c6, pawn c6, queen c6, knight d7, so that the queen maintains defense of the rook. He does have a passed c pawn, though. It might be okay. It might be okay. Okay, we can fall back on that. We can fall back on this. But is there anything better? Because this is kind of uncomfortable, in all honesty. Hmm. Yeah, a6 I just don't think is any good because of this. And if we take the bishop, then he takes the knight, and that's no good. If rook c8, then he just exchanges everything on d5 again, and we're left with an isolated pawn, and that just looks terrible, really. Because he can always support c5 with a move like b4. Maybe queen f6 was a better approach. I don't know. Knight e4 is maybe worth considering, but I think he can just win a pawn and get off scot-free.
Okay, I think I should consider DC4 a bit a bit um more seriously. DC4. Obviously if bishop c4, we're fine. We can just play a move like a6 and I'm happy. If DC4, bishop c6, pawn c6, queen c6, knight d7. Something like, I don't know, rook d1, rook c8. Uh, that looks okay. Something like queen a6, maybe bishop c5. I'm going to do it. I don't know if this is good or not, in all honesty. And this might just be losing, but I don't see anything better because... If we play a move like rook c8 or a6, we're just trading down into a clearly worse endgame. And I don't see how we build any kind of actual uh, counter-attack in that sort of position. I think we're just clearly worse with no real hope of improvement. So this might be a more practical option. Maybe I misplayed something earlier in the opening, but I, it's not obvious to me where that would have been. Okay, so he goes for this. I assume he's going to take on c6. Of course, we can't block with the queen because that hangs a rook. So knight d7 is really the only move to maintain the queen's defense. And I mean, material is equal. Um, the c4 pawn looks potentially... Well, it is vulnerable, but like, there's not an obvious way for white to take it just yet. The knight is also not really infiltrating. If he goes for a move like knight b5 to try and get into c7 or d6... I think just rook c8 covers c7, attacks the queen, puts pressure on c5. And something like knight d6 can probably just be met with bishop takes, queen takes. And just something like queen c7, and we offer a queen trade, we go after the c5 pawn. That probably goes into more of an equalish endgame, I think. It looks very scary to be letting the queen in like this, no doubt. But, like, the bishop can't do a whole lot to actually bother us. The knight is the only real threat, but the only square it can really get to that is threatening or squares a c7 and d6. And c7 can be covered with rook c8, and if he ever goes to d6, we're just gonna take him. So this is probably okay. And white isn't castled yet, which maybe we can bring up some useful check on a5 at some point if white doesn't take the time to castle his king. If he castles now, I assume he'd castle kingside. He could go queenside, but that looks very scary. Rook d1 is definitely a move to just put pressure on the knight, but it's defended pretty well. I think we can just play if rook d1, rook c8. And let's say queen b7, just queen c7, defending a7, offering a trade, breaking the pin. And c5 is really, really vulnerable there. So my guess would be, if we can get the queens off the board, probably c5 falls and c4 falls. And then it's kind of an interesting situation where it's 2v1 on the queen side in white's favor and 4v3 on the king side in our favor. And that endgame probably is slightly better for white because he can try and quit, create a queen side passer. But it's playable. It's playable. Okay, if rook c8... Okay, for some reason I thought the queen could take a7. <laughs> um, knight e4 is an interesting move because I think he's just trying to defend the c5 pawn and also put pressure on d6. And what we don't want to allow is something like knight d6, bishop d6, pawn d6 because then the pawn becomes a problem. So I think rook c8 kind of stops that because... If knight d6, bishop d6, you can't take with the pawn because the queen hangs. So you'd have to take with the queen instead. And then it's not so much of a problem. So we can just play a move like queen c7. So, okay, rook c8. What does, what does white do? Knight d6, as we've established, isn't really that good. Queen a5 is probably worth considering. Attacks the pawn, defends this pawn, attacks the king. If something like queen a5, bishop d2... Okay, I actually don't know where the queen goes then. <laughs> we can probably only drop back, so that's actually no good. So probably rook c8 is the best move. 
Rook c8, let's say queen b5, attacking c4 and keeping an eye on b5. Then what? Queen c7. Queen c4. Knight c5. Don't know if I love that after a move like rook c1. Hmm. Rook c8, queen b5. What do we do? Or even queen a6. Because queen a5 would control both of these squares, so it would stop white from doing that. But I don't know what we do in response to bishop to d2. That's my issue. Queen a5, bishop d2. I mean, the bishop no longer defends c5, but we can't take it yet. And the queen can only really drop back to d8. I don't know if this is a good way to offer a repetition. Because we can probably just go bishop b4, something like that. This is tricky. This is tricky. What about queen c8? We can maybe go a6. No, a6 isn't. I mean, my idea is to stop the queen from going to either of these squares. But the queen can always just go to a4 anyway. Something like queen c8, queen b5, I don't see how that helps. He's defending this pawn very, very well. Hmm. Queen b8 does go after b2, but something like rook d1 and then knight is a, is a problem. Rook b8, I mean, probably same thing, just rook d1, so... Rook c8 wins a tempo, but let's say queen a6. I'm going to do it because I actually don't know what else to do. But then, like, white's only actual moves are to do, you know, queen b5, queen a4, or queen a6, which all achieve the same goal of attacking the c4 pawn. Although queen b5 does also defend c5, which is an added bonus. a6 and a4 both attack a7. I think queen b5 is probably the most accurate. I don't want to end up in a pawn down endgame here. <laughs> I really don't. Mm, queen a4, sorry, queen h4 is worth considering. <clears throat> okay, choose this queen there. I guess that maintains the pin on the knight, so I can't play knight c5. That's annoying. That is really annoying. Mm. Queen a4. Queen c4. White is threatening knight d6 to pick up my queen. That's no good. I don't know how we defend this pawn. Can we play c3? If knight takes, then we take on c5 because we remove a defender. If c3 and pawn takes, that's a massive weakness. Does he have c6? Maybe. He might have c6. Oh, this is tough. Okay, what about queen c7? Defend a7. Attack c5. Queen c7, queen c4. Knight c5. My issue is rook c1. I don't know what to do there. Maybe we can go queen a5. I think that gives a check and gets out of the pin. So we're probably okay. We can always um, consider taking on c5 with the bishop as well, rather than the knight, so that we keep this diagonal covered and also we prepare castling if we take with the bishop. Now we obviously have four attackers on the c5 pawn. He has, well, two defenders currently. 
Um, the queen is stopping the knight from attacking, though, so it's more like 3v2. Although I guess we're not actually threatening to take, because if he doesn't move the queen, we can't take him. That's enough. We could play queen e5 to put a bunch of pressure on a lot of things, so that might be useful. If c6 now, we can just take it, so we get rid of that idea as well. My issue with c6 was um, if we played something like, in this position, c3, c6, knight e5, c7, check, queen d7, I don't know, it opens the bishop up on a7 and that. <sighs> he keeps finding good moves. Rook d1, so we now can't move with the queen because the knight hangs. Hmm. What? Can we go f5 to try and kick this knight? Because now the queen isn't attacking uh, e6. If f5, I don't want to play it, but we should consider it. f5, knight d6 looks like the most natural move because... I mean, he could go to c3 because we can't take on c5 because our queen would end up walking away from the defense of the knight. So f5, knight c3, do we actually have a threat? I don't think so. What about queen c6? Ooh, queen c6. We offer a queen trade, we attack the knight. If he trades, then c5 is going to fall, and he can't do anything about it. If queen c6, queen a7, we can't take the knight because our knight is hanging. Queen c6, queen a7. Maybe we have rook c7. a8 isn't accessible. b8 isn't accessible. So we can't give a check. And if he retreats to a square like... Ah, a5 keeps the knight on the rook, so I can't take the knight. Then maybe I can just go knight c5, knight c5, bishop c5, bishop c5, queen c5. If queen c6, knight d6, we just take. If pawn takes, we take the queen, so that's no good. I think this is probably the best move. Because we have way too many problems otherwise. This knight being pinned is an issue. Hmm. Very, very difficult. I think taking a7 might be good for him though. Queen a7. I don't know about bishop c5. Oh no, he can't do this because we'll just take. So if queen a7, bishop c5. Maybe he can go knight c5, knight c5. Castles. Some like knight d3. Maybe. b3 to try and undermine the knight. Uh, okay, if queen a7, I would prefer to take with the knight. Wait, queen a7, yeah, we can't take the knight because of um, queen d7. Queen a7, rook c7, queen a5. Hmm. Don't think that's great because he keeps an eye on the rook, which is a problem. The so queen a7. Wait, but if knight c5, knight c5, bishop c5, bishop c5, queen c5, I know I drew a bunch of those arrows wrong, then he does have queen d7. So we can't actually do that. Queen a7, we might have to. Wait, could we do rook a8 rather than rook c7? Oh, rook a8 traps the queen. Oh, we just trapped the queen. If knight d6, we just take it. That doesn't help him. Okay, yeah, cool. He can't take on a7. That, that is great. That is great. If something like this... Uh, I mean, he could try taking on d7, but then we just take the queen. Rook takes... 
And then we just do something like bishop to e7. I Oh, no, then the knight hangs. The knight just hangs. That doesn't work. He can't get, like, some compensation for the uh, rook and a piece for a queen. I think he might have to take us. He could go queen c2 to keep an eye on c4 and defend the knight. If queen c2... I don't think that's great. We can probably just take on c5, threaten a move like knight d3 check, the knight is now under attack. So something like knight c5, bishop c5, queen c4, bishop e3, queen c6, rook c6, pawn e3. I think we're probably a bit better after a move like king e7. And we probably hunt down his queen side. And the e3 pawn is obviously a weakness. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, this might actually work. If I've played this, like, theoretically, like, well, then I'm going to be incredibly impressed because I literally had no idea. Well, I still kind of have no idea what's going on. But in terms of the opening, I was pretty clueless, in all honesty. But I figure a lot of the time in the Karo Khan, you can never be real like real worse you can never be really really bad if you play logical moves like logical looking moves calculate a little bit just to make sure and even if you don't know the theory perfectly i think not having like just general principles that you're sticking by can work we should consider queen c6 rook c6 knight d6 with the idea of bishop d6, pawn d6, opening up an attack on a7. Maybe we just go a6 and try and claim that d6 is a weakness. We could also do it queen c6, rook c6, knight d6, bishop d6, pawn d6, something like knight e5. Because if bishop a7... Knight d3 check, king e2, rook d6, b3, trying to undermine the knight. Knight f4, king f3. And then like knight d5, blocking the rook's connection. Although no, then he can just take on c, uh, c4 though. Interesting. That might be his best um, option, though. Just trading queens and putting the knight on d6. He takes on c4. That's kind of surprising, honestly. I don't know why I didn't... I kind of just fought queen c2, but he can just go queen c4. If um, knight c5, rook c1... Queen e4 doesn't work, because queen e4, knight e4, rook c8. So knight c5, rook c1... I don't know. I don't know about that. Hmm. Bishop c5. Knight c5, knight c5, rook c1. Again, that looks like a problem. Who can sit knight e5, maybe? I don't know how we win this pawn back. I don't know how we win this back. Um, because knight d6 is an idea if we don't take the pawn. Knight c5, rook c1. Okay, the recording kind of cut out because I ran out of disk space. Um, so we are trying knight b6, basically, because I don't see anything better. And my idea is that knight d6 doesn't work because we take, and if rook takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, we take the queen and we should be good. If we are also attacking the knight, so I'm assuming the something like queen d4 is probably the move. I'm kind of just accepting that we're not going to win this c5 pawn back yet. But I think we can play something like knight d5 
and the knight is pretty safe on that square because he has no e or c pawn that can attack it because the c pawn is too far advanced now we put pressure on the bishop maybe we can win back the c5 pawn we can maybe put pressure on b2 and a2 something like bishop e7 and castle we should be okay although knight queen d4 knight d5 he can't go knight d6 because bishop takes pawn takes queen takes he could take on a he could play queen a7 then we just castle and uh it's not amazing because i don't know his queen side pawns are pretty scary but we do have a strong knight on d5 at the very least i don't think we have anything better though if knight d6 bishop d6 pawn d6 we don't have to take on d6 but i think we probably should like we could play a move like a6 to try and save the pawn but then like queen b4 castle maybe well that wouldn't actually work because we can probably just take and then take and then take on g2 so white probably does have to castle at some point in that sequence but not the end of the world down a pawn but i think we have a bit of compensation the queen side pawns for white might be difficult to hold on to and we have a very strong knight on d5 and you know we're not letting white go knight d6 very easily and bishop to f4 doesn't really like work to try and support the d6 square because the knight controls that and also this diagonal could be useful in the future so not ideal also the queen's pressure on g7 is annoying okay interesting i'm gonna go queen a6 to defend a7 i can't really move the bishop because g7 hangs but i'm also stopping white from castling i'm not sure this is a good idea for white he it doesn't matter because i can't really take the bishop i don't want to trade my knight for the bishop so I feel like that's a bit of a waste. Maybe we could have just taken on c5. Maybe I should have just... Oh no, but then g7. Then g7 is a problem. So we couldn't do that. f5 might be an idea to kick the knight and then take on c5. We're still controlling d6 as well if the knight tries to hop in there. He could be trying bishop d4 to provide support for knight d6. If bishop b4, we could take on a2. Knight d6, bishop d6, pawn d6. We would have ideas of rook c4 to fork the queen and the bishop. But then moves like queen d7 might be a problem. Because our rook would hang. a3, okay. Um, this is difficult. I'm just going to go f5. I don't know if this is good, but I want to take the knight's eye off of c5. This is the move that I assume he kind of has to play. Knight d6, pawn d6, bishop d6. If queen d6, then queen g7. Which is very annoying. So we might just have to castle or play like king f7. King f7 isn't the end of the world because that keeps an eye on e6. And he doesn't have a knight anymore, so it's actually difficult to target the king. The queen also... I mean, the pawn will be on d6, but the queen will help defend e6 at some point. And we still don't allow white to castle, which means his rook can't get into the game. don't see anything better is g4 might be scary trying to break apart my king's defense also try and maybe overload this pawn something like g4 queen d6 take that looks a bit unpleasant hmm this isn't the end of the world 
Considering the way the opening went, I don't think this is too bad. Bishop b4 might be a good move. Okay, that's surprising. Um. Okay. Go rook c7. I don't know if this is the right idea. G4, rook d7, pawn f5, ef5, rook g1, something like queen f6 maybe? Although we don't have to go into that, of course. If g4, well, we can't play g6 because our rook hangs. Hmm, that is annoying. Definitely annoying. We could do something like knight e7, but then d7 gets defended. With the idea of if he takes, we take with the knight, but I uh, don't know if I love that. If g4, rook d7, pawn f5, pawn f5, we do have moves like queen e6 as well, so that's alright. We can always drop the knight back to f6. Whoa. That's a cool move. That is a cool move. But I think we can just play rook to g8, and now the bishop's just under attack. Bishop f5, rook d7. I think that's a bit gimmicky to move bishop to h6. Of course, we couldn't take because of um, queen h8. But now g7 is just defended, and the pawn is no longer pinned to the rook. Again, our king looks exposed, but we're defending the 7th rank. We're now defending g7, and there's no way in for the queen on the light squares, because we have a nice light square blockade, which is typical of the Karo, right? Even though it no longer really looks like a Karo. And he has a dark square bishop. He's also down to 20 seconds, so that's pretty ideal for us. And try and make something happen here. I'm gonna assume bishop f4. And I'm just gonna take on d7. Okay. Yeah, let's just take on d7. Restore material equality. Queen trade offer. Hmm. Do I accept? Yeah, let's accept. And let's go rook d8. Because I think I'm a little bit ahead in development now. It's something like castles. Knight e3 maybe. Mm, we don't have to take on e3 though. We could keep the knight. Could keep the knight. Hmm. Nah, I want to take the bishop. I want to take, and I think this is probably a draw. I don't want to allow um, rook f e1 to go after the e6 pawn, because e6 is kind of difficult to defend. I'd like to play king f6 e5 and e4, but then even moves like f3 are quite undermining. So I'm just going to offer a trade, and it's probably a complete draw. Um, I feel like white has a slight advantage with his queenside pawn majority. So if we trade rooks and we get to only one rook each, then I, I'm confident I should be able to draw. Let's go king f6 so that rook c7 doesn't come with check. Don't want to lose this a7 pawn. Unless we win b2 and then like get behind the a pawn. Let's take.
Okay, I think this works. I think we can win the B-pawn by force. I'll show you why I didn't play a move like um, Rook D1, Rook B1 immediately after the game. But yeah, I think now Rook B8, he can't go B4 because our pawn picks up that square. So if Rook A5, Rook B2, we cut the king off, which is useful. Of course, he can manufacture a way out. But most importantly, we can play Rook to A2 get behind the a pawn and the white rook will be stuck in front of the a pawn which will make it difficult for him to actually make anything happen i'm going to offer my opponent a draw just because i assume this i mean white is the only one pushing for a win so it can't hurt for me to offer it he declines i mean as expected really let's go for rook a2 um Let's just push the inside pawns a bit. G5. I don't know what the exact setup here is. We don't want to allow something like a6, rook a8, a7, rook f8, and then promote. Because if rook f8 comes with check, it doesn't work. So I'm probably just going to tuck my king on e5. I'm going to play f4 to try and set up something like f3 to try and suffocate the white king so it can't get out. I'm expecting rook g2 or trading first. It will weaken the h pawn, but currently he can't play rook to h7 because rook a5 covers. Um. I don't know if I'm misplaying this. Okay, I'm going to go rook a3 to cut the king off so that it can't advance any further. If f3, that's not a problem because king h3, we can meet with rook to f3 check, I think. White's definitely the one pushing for a win here, which isn't, isn't great, but okay, if h4... Rook h7, rook a6, rook h4, king g5, that's good. I'm trying to go h3 check to force the king back. If my opponent plays h3, then we might be able to go f3. Potentially. Interesting. If h3, e5. Rook a8. Okay, goes f3. I'm going to go king e5 to maybe try and get in like this. Okay, h3 I think I like. Now the king's not on the checking square. If king h3, rook f3, king g2, rook back to a3, then we have connected passes, which we could create something there. Damn, this is way trickier than I expected it to be. And he goes for it, okay. Maybe, I mean, he might have had to. That might have been his only real choice. I don't like king e4 because of rook e8. I might be able to give a few checks and get a perpetual. Because if the king comes over here to try and attack my rook, then the f pawn can run or the h pawn might fall. And if he goes to a square like g4, we might be able to push. Hmm. Pro it's probably just a draw. It's probably a draw. But uh, white might be the one. I mean, it's interesting because white has two flank pawns, both passers, and I have two central connected passers. 
Um, obviously, the ape horn is very far advanced already. Yeah, that should be a draw. That should be an easy draw. Well, if rook e8, we can actually throw king a2 in... Sorry, rook 2 a2 check in first to force the king back. Whoa. He's going to go for it. Wow. That's unexpected. Is white not actually losing, potentially? Because we're either going to threaten to promote or mate him. This might be really bad. Check. Is he going to go to G3? No. Wait, but then we're threatening mate. No, white's blown it. I think he had to go to G3. King E3. I think he loses. Because the E6 pawn is the hero because rook E8 doesn't come with check. And rook to A1 is checkmate. If the king moves to a square like G1, then we just push with check. If he goes back to F2, then, sorry, back to F1, then we check King G2 and promote with check. Yeah, that's game over. Because he can't run to the second rank because we promote with discovered check. That is crazy. Completely drawn position. And white just blew it. Completely blew it. Wow. Well, I think I probably misplayed the opening a bit because that got way too dicey. So we're going to figure out where I went wrong there. But well played to my opponent again, as always, posing me a lot of problems. Um, I would encourage you to stick around for the analysis section. So let's get into it. So a bit of a crazy game. And I did misplay the opening. A couple of the moves that I had considered and just didn't play were the moves I should have gone for. Um, of course, we've always got to do the uh, game review accuracies. So 90.5 for myself and 85.8 for my opponent really really precise game my opponent had five great moves and i had three there were many positions where there was just one move to find and in some of them we found it some of them we didn't but okay we have a caro we have the advance and bishop f5 is probably the most popular line to go for and I mean, to be fair, I hated this with white, which is why I stopped playing the advanced variation, because I struggled to really get much out of it. After just something like e6, it's so solid, like h6, maybe even drop the bishop back, which I felt kind of forced me to trade light squared bishops as the white pieces, and then it was difficult to form an actual attack. So c5 is the line that I prefer with black, though. Knight f3, knight c6, dc5, and... Oh, I think e6 might be a little bit better than bishop g4. Both of them are playable, though. Both are playable. Bishop g4 is fine. I was expecting bishop b5 just to counterpin me. And after something like queen a5, knight c3, I think e6 is the move just to secure the d5 pawn. And you're kind of claiming that this, this knight is misplaced because the pawn should be on c3 to support a move like b4 to help defend the c5 pawn. And this is just quite pleasant for black. So that's probably why my opponent chose c3 instead, so that queen a5 never comes with check. So that when he put his bishop on b5 later on, it was perfectly safe. We go e6, open up the attack on c5, bishop e3. And here I take on f3 with the bishop, which is apparently the wrong idea. It was okay. But I think a6 is a bit better just to stop this bishop from coming out to b5, which makes a lot of sense. Bishop, queen b3 looks to be the best move for white. But then you can just take on f3. And if queen b7, knight a5 or knight e5. Oh, there's even d4, which is kind of mad. Opening up the bishop's defense to the knight and attacking this bishop. And if you take the bishop... And knight a5 attacks the queen. Queen e4. D e3. 
Queen A4 to go after the knight. King E7. Fe3 and white is better. Down a piece. Knight B7, B4. Okay, this is insane. <laughs> Instead, I, I, I took on F3. So A6 is better to stop Bishop B4. But, you know, there we go. Knight E5, we're still okay. But white is building a little bit of an advantage. Bishop B5, knight D7 is not as good as knight C6. I was worried about um, C6, but C4 is actually just a bigger concern because we can't take, because B7 hangs and the queen isn't defending D5 like it was if the knight goes to um, C6. So knight C6 is the first great move of the game. There's plenty more to come though. And then C4. And here I was kind of torn. I didn't know what to do. I considered the move A6, which is playable. And if bishop c6, bc6, I thought, yeah, this is this is pretty solid. This looks very nice for black because d5 is very well defended. My issue was, if I went a6, I didn't know what to do after bishop a4, just maintaining the pin. And the computer says that I have to revert back to the original idea, which it also likes instead of a6, but probably playing a6 first is a bit better, is queen f6. And I considered this in the game... But I wasn't thrilled with it because, I don't know, something like knight d2 or taking on d5? Yeah, taking on d5 was my issue. Queen f3, gf3, ed5. Ah, maybe the d-pawn is okay because white structure is so bad. But yeah, I think I discarded the move queen f6 a bit too early. I can also just play it in this position as well. And, I mean, if we trade on f6, then great. Like, my knight gets developed, we're all very happy. But white isn't obviously not going to be cooperative. He could drop the queen back, put the queen on g3. Dropping the queen to d1 seems unlikely, to be honest. Move like knight d2, just supporting the queen. So I'd probably have to take white, and then he gets the knight out, knight f6. And, I don't know, maybe knight e5 is a bit annoying. Rook c8, no, not rook d8, rook c8. And I'm okay. I probably should have gone, well, I should have gone for this line because knight f6 just got me into a load of trouble after knight c3. Here, a6 is apparently a move. Of course, if you take, then I take and I'm good. But bishop to a4 just maintains the pin. And white can just take on d5. I didn't like this because after knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, queen d5, pawn d5, the bishop just retreats, this pin maintains, the d-pawn is very weak. And I thought this was just bad. Apparently not, but like, that, that was my reasoning. Instead I took on c4, which is bad, <laughs> because of bishop c6, pawn c6, queen c6. Here I have to go knight d7. And knight e4 is an inaccuracy. I was expecting rook d1. Apparently queenside castling is also playable. Although this does potentially look dangerous for white just to put pressure on the knight immediately. Rook c8, queen a4. And we get a similar position to the game, except the knight isn't on e4, because I guess the point is it doesn't need to be. Something like queen c7, and white is supposed to just double rooks. Queen c6, queen c6, rook c6. Rook hd1. Ah, uh, I assume I can't really... Okay, so the point is I have to move my knight, and then just rook d8, and I can't develop. Yeah, this is tough, but it's also tough to see with white because there's no immediate knockout. It's like a positional domination, which is more difficult to see, like, you know, six moves in the future. So he chooses knight e4, which makes sense. Just defend c5, attacks a d6 square. Rook c8, queen a4, queen c7. I don't think there was anything much better than queen c7. So I don't know why it's giving it a good move because I think it's the best move. Rook d1. Again, bishop e7 is playable, but I wanted to just find a fix for the position. I did consider the move a5, which the computer also likes, but it prefers queen c6. And I was initially worried about queen a7 until I realized that rook a8 is just a bit of a killer. Although, knight d6, bishop d6, rook d6 attacks the queen... And I have to find queen c8 to maintain an advantage. Oh yeah, because the queen is still just trapped. 
So rook d7, rook a7, rook a7. And here, unlike the previous position, if white tried something like this, the knight isn't hanging on e4. I did um, talk about that during the game. Um, you can rewind to that position if you want to see my thought process on that. But here, I mean, white can push for an advantage, but I think black is probably better. So my opponent takes on c4, which is really the only move to maintain the advantage. And we go knight b6. I think it was a practical option because we force the queen to move, get the knight to d5, and then maybe we can make something happen. If something like knight c3 to try and challenge the knight, I assume I can just take. If pawn takes, then the structure is just damaged. And if queen takes, uh, I can take on g2. Take on g2. So that then the diagonal comes in useful. So my opponent went bishop d2, and I just thought this was really weird. I didn't see the point of this. And we go queen a6 just to cover this diagonal. And there's no easy way for white to block it because the rook no longer controls d3. a3 is played. I was... Oh, no, no, not g4 in this position. a3 makes sense, though, to defend a2. Maybe try and play b4. Here we go f5, which is a very good move. I'm happy I played it because I didn't know what else I could even do. Rook g8 is a move. f6 is a move. Rook d8 is a move, but I think f5 is nice and direct. Because if the knight retreats to a square like c3, then we just take on c5. And we win the pawn back, and maybe white is a little bit better, but we can fight. Knight d6 is definitely a good idea. But after bishop d6, white makes a mistake by taking. Queen g7 is the move. And it's just a simple double attack. And I can't defend both pieces. My best move is bishop e5, apparently. So that after white takes, I go rook g8. The queen defends e6, and I just try and survive. If my opponent had found that, I would have just lost. He instead took on d d6. And king f7 is the best move by a margin. I did consider castling, but I wanted to defend e6. So... Okay, d7 is a blunder because of rook c4. I didn't see this. I feel like I should have. Something like queen d3 to try and pin. Uh, I have rook e4. Bishop e3 defending the queen. Queen d3, rook d3, and f4. Again, very tough to see. I think after rook c4, the queen just has no real good squares. Yeah, the queen just runs out of squares because d3 is the best and you just lose a bishop as a result. But I had no I had no time. So I was deciding between rook d8 and rook c7. And both of them are bad. <laughs> both of them are just bad. Rook c4 is the best and rook c2 is the second best. Although actually putting the rook on d8 is also good because rook c7 is bad because of bishop h6, which is a great move. And I thought that rook g8 solves all my problems, but it doesn't. Because white can just promote, and my rook's overloaded. And if I take, then queen takes, and I'm not lost, but I'm a lot worse. Although apparently queen e5 is the only good move. Which is kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. Something like queen to h8 is just bad. King d7. And if you give another check, then I guess I just run to the queen side. And... The king side might actually be a problem for white. So lots of mistakes, but we had low time. The bishop comes back to e3. We take on d7. Queen d3 offers a trade of queens, which is a very practical option for my opponent. Because all of these pieces are placed quite well. He needs to try and castle and put a rook on e1. Like, that would be the dream here. But he can't do that because I'm blocking the diagonal. And if you try and stop me by playing, like, rook d3, then apparently you just lose. So that's no good. I can also try and deflect the queen with e5. So queen d3 makes sense. And I have nothing better than to take. I did consider queen b7. But I thought white just castles. And I thought it'd be too dangerous to take on b2. Yeah, this is a bit of an issue. So considering my king is quite weak as well. I thought I'd trade. I go rook gd8. Maybe not the most accurate of moves. Rook b8 is apparently a bit better. And after something like b4, then a5. So 
Maybe bishop d4 can be played, though. No, because this is a fork. And the bishop's under attack, so rook g3 isn't playable. Again, we're both very low on time, so we're not going to play perfectly. I choose to take on e3 because I didn't want to allow bishop d4. Apparently e5 is okay, which does stop bishop d4. Because if the bishop gets a d4, then it's very difficult to get out. Because let's say I do something like a6, bishop d4, let's say like g6, bishop e5. I thought this would be quite uncomfortable because it's really difficult to kick the bishop away. So instead, I decide on knight c3, rook, knight e3, rook e3, and rook d1, just to force the rooks off the board. And here I'm like, okay, this is just a draw. We'll just play this position out and see what happens. Um, I did, of course, offer my opponent a trade because, sorry, not a trade, a draw, because I was like, white is the one pushing for an advantage. Apparently I could do this. But no, this is just wrong. I don't know why the computer suggested that. Rook a d7. And if this, probably this. Hmm. Oh no, this is mate. What am I on? <laughs> what am I on? You know, white can't take me because he gets mated. I'm an idiot. Okay, whatever. We take. I go a5. I didn't want to go for... um. I didn't want to go rook d1 and rook b1. Because I didn't like the um, four of b4. I didn't like this. Because I was thinking, okay, if I do something like rook a1, then white can just take a7. And how do I defend the a7 pawn? Because if, when white takes on a7, he defends a3. So instead, I mean, apparently I'm okay after a6, rook a7, rook b2. The king steps over then i take on f2 and eat the king side pawns and i guess i push the f pawn but this is also difficult to do so okay instead i go a5 with the idea of rook b8 so we win the b pawn by force because b4 isn't playable and you can't really play rook c2 because this is quite passive there's no need for white to do this so we trade he starts pushing the a pawn i throw the um h and g pawn forward so the rook can't do anything to them and try and like set some kind of decoy. And my idea was with f4 to try and go f3 so that the king couldn't make any progress forward. We said trading king g2. I was a little bit concerned about moves like rook h7, but of course the rook taking on a5 would defend h5. I didn't play e5, even though that's the best move, because I thought that my king would be a bit bare, because I wanted to hide the king in front of the e pawn, which is kind of what won me the game even if it's more, not technically the most accurate. So, okay, white sends the pawn down the board. F3, which kind of surprised me. I was expecting H3. I was going to go F3, and after King H2, just try and drag this out, I guess. Try and make something happen here. Maybe I can just go like this. And then just come all the way back. Maybe white has to do this, although he's apparently just worse. I suppose. Maybe black was the one with the like actual ideas, but I could go king e5. I was trying to potentially get my king into e3. But here I thought, okay, h3. And this is a bit of an issue for white, because if he moves the king over, we force the king to the back rank. And then the, our king comes into e3 to go after f3. h2 is also hanging, so we could even just take that if we wanted. And the h pawn is very far advanced. So the king kind of has to take on h3, giving us the f3 pawn. And then there's a bit of a race on. Because it's difficult for white to get the a pawn down. And the h pawn is miles away from promoting. Whereas our f pawn and e pawn are very well situated alongside our rook and king to try and cause some problems. So I give a check on a2 first, king f3, rook a3, king e2, king e4, and I'm like, this is like, I, I can force the king back, and white has no good moves. I was expecting rook e8, rook a2, force the king back, rook a7, rook e6, something like king f3 or king f5, let's say king f3, rook e1, and it's a draw, but white, I, I'd say that black is in the driver's seat here. I don't see how white like has any actual activity because our king and pawn are very far forward. 
and his pieces are just very passive. He goes h4 though. Apparently I should have given this check first. Force the king back. And then go e5. And instead went f3. And king f2 is the only move. Because I thought if the king goes back to a square like e1, then king e3 and he's getting mated. And we get what we had in the game sort of. But after king f2, rook a2, the king has to go to g3. This is what I was expecting him to do. And then, I mean, it's probably a draw. Rook g2 is the only real way to push here. Rook g7 to go the other way around with the pawn and cut the king off the g file. Rook b8 to rook a7. Rook b4. And black can maybe push for a win. Although the king can probably get back into the game now. But king f1 was just a. I was just like shocked because. The king has no way out after king e3. He can literally do nothing. He tries to make his way out like that. But yeah, f2 and it's game over. If king f1, then we just force a promotion with check. But it doesn't even matter because the rook can't check us on e8 because of the e6 pawn. So crazy that my opponent blundered this. But I made plenty of blunders during the game as well. So no shame. Kind of a mad Karo Khan game. And some good things to learn from the opening as well. I think this um especially this A6 move here. Yeah, the A6 move here I'll definitely be remembering to try and stop this bishop from doing anything useful. And here I think black can push for an advantage. Or instead of playing bishop g4 going e6, although I've played this in the past and I've just ended up getting slaughtered. So I wouldn't recommend. I would say this um this line with bishop g4 and after something like c3 going a6 and if bishop to b5 then going e6 so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and can implement some of these ideas in your own games if you want to check out the previous episodes of the rating climb series then the playlist will be linked below thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one